As part of the uh, Chinese 6040 CNC kit I bought, I, uh, this lead screw was uh, delivered. And as I had to take it apart to bring it home, uh, I took off uh, the uh, nut here and uh, then all the ball bearings went out. And I tried to assemble it once, uh, but as you can see here, I was not totally successful because I ended up with four extra uh, balls here. So my intention is now to get them back in place. And uh, while doing it, I might as well show uh, how such a uh, ball screw is constructed and how we, uh, at least in principle, are supposed to put the uh, the balls back in place. So right now, first thing I will be, be doing is basically take off uh, uh, the whole thing, clean up uh, all the uh, the balls and the inside of the bearing in order to have it all not greased. The first time I did it, I had it all greased up, and uh, that actually made uh, it uh, a lot more complicated and more sticky. So I think you have to grease it up. Uh, as you go rather than uh, up front. Okay, so <clears throat> now I have basically uh, gotten all the balls out and sorted them in three piles. Uh, we have the uh, lid from for both ends. We have the three deflectors here, the casing, and if you look here, you can see where the deflectors are going in. Three places, bottom, mid and top. Uh, and if you take a careful look at a deflector, you can see that it has a pretty deep groove. And the whole idea is that when it's sitting, riding on the uh, thread here, like this, then the ball bearing, or the balls can go in here and come out here, basically just move them one uh, level up and that then the pearl of chains will go like this out here, just around and coming in here, going back again. So that's how they keep the, 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 the uh, balls running inside the bearing. So that's the components. Okay, so now I will start assembly. And first thing is to uh, install um, this end cap here, and I will do it in this end. It has a rim here, so it has to go down here under the uh, screws, like that. And then I will tighten. We'll tighten that up. Like that. Then I take the uh, three deflectors and stick them in. So now we have the three deflectors in and then I will start putting the threaded rod up into the mechanism here. Hope that they don't go out. So now the uh, three inserts are in place and you can see that the thread goes nicely up and around but it's all you know, totally loose. So now the, the deal is essentially that you will um, need to go to the first um, 
of the three, the lower one. Adjust the uh, the threaded rod so that you can put the uh, the ball down there and stick them into the uh, appropriate groove. And I am not sure that's gonna show up really well on the uh, video. Yeah, so I don't think you can see anything of this. Uh, essentially, what I'm trying to do is to get the uh, the balls down and into each of their groove, and uh, um, then you continue uh, with the next level. You turn the uh, the lead screw in one level up, and then you repeat it until you have uh, all the balls in place in each of their three grooves. So I'll, I'll uh, turn off the camera and uh, try to get these uh, organized. Last one. Just take the camera here and go really close. So now we have it. I see that it is very hard to see. But now they are all in place. So here is the ball screw fully assembled. And you can see the insert here. And um, I found a video on the uh, internet that actually quite nicely demonstrates this uh, the function of, of, of this ball screw. Uh, so I'll show you that. Internal circulation ball screws are composed of a screw, nuts, ball bearings, return caps and wipers. The bearings circulate in single circles. The return cap spans two adjacent bearing races, forming a single closed circuit. Because the return cap is installed within the nut, this type of ball screw is known as an internal circulation ball screw. Return cap forms a return channel for the bearings and ensures that the movement of the bearings follows a closed circuit.